A large search and rescue team with state-of-the-art life-saving equipment. Uh, they will be deploying to uh, Turkey very soon. With Syria, of course, the situation is more complicated, but we have given uh, many years of support to the White Helmets, who, of course, are experts in search and rescue. This Turkish community in North London is desperate for news about relatives, longing to help in their hour of need and in despair for being thousands of miles away from their suffering. Heidi Gul managed to get through to his friend's son Hassan in the city of Gaziantep via FaceTime. He told us of the terrifying moment when the earthquake struck, while he, his parents, brother, sister and grandma all slept. The, the lamps were shaking. Uh, uh, we were shaking also, and we, we don't know what we have to do. Uh, we were shocked. Uh, my sister was crying, and my brother was screaming. Hairi is relieved they're alive, but greatly concerned for those he can't get through to. Some of them we can contact. Some maybe, you know, maybe they they die. Another friend in Turkey tells Heidi he's come to check on relatives in a small rural village, only to find his aunt has been killed, his uncle seriously injured, and their home in ruins, while neighbors huddle round a makeshift fire trying to keep warm. And so many here are trying to get there to be with loved ones and help in aid efforts. But with airports in Turkey shut, it's proving impossible. This Turkish politician was visiting the UK and is desperate to return home, but can't. The best all over the world, all of the people, because this is not going to be over, over one night. This is not going to be over when all the people or their dead bodies are rescued from these buildings. They are going to be a, a long period of time. They are going to need housing. They are going to need food. For now, all they can do is wait and hope. Sejal Karia, News at 10. Well, despite the fact it's gone one in the morning here, the airport remains incredibly busy. We've seen teams from Turkey's disaster relief agency, staff and volunteers trying to board flights down to the south of the country. We've seen sniffer dogs in cages who will be going with them. This is a country that was prepared to as much as anybody can be for this. They knew that a major earthquake was likely to come. They'd held drills very regularly right across the country every year. So to a degree, people knew what to expect. The fact that there would be aftershocks to follow. There have been more than 130 of them today. The whole country is now on earthquake alert and seven days of national mourning have been declared for the victims. But there are international teams coming in here too from all across the globe. And if the scale of the response has been formidable, so too are, of course, the challenges. Not just because of the scale of the area affected, but most of all because of the weather. It is bitterly cold here. It is snowing across much of the areas affected and the temperature is continuing to plummet and is due to continue doing so over the next few days. So if the scale of this tragedy, if it's too early to predict that for some of those buried beneath the rubble because of those temperatures, it will already 